Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for the patch 12.13 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with an updated tier list for all 5 roles and give you an idea of what's going to be good and what's not going to be so good for each role this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champions and this video will give you an immediate advantage over the other players in solo queue. Make sure to subscribe because we make meta videos just like this to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everyone can agree that Riot does well, the skins. Riot has brought back the Star Guardian skin line, and there are so many skins this time around that they're just going to be split up across two patches. For this patch, we'll be getting the Star Guardian Echo, which is a prestige version as well, Star Guardian Sona, Star Guardian Kaisa, which is a legendary skin, and Star Nemesis Fiddlesticks. Riot promised Fiddlesticks would be getting a skin in 2021, and that never happened, but better late than never, right? Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. There are a ton of champions changes on this patch, so they went pretty light on things here. Lethality and Mythics are getting buffed across the board, with all three of them getting plus 5 movement speed added to their Mythic passives. Eclipse is getting a small nerf, but it's only aimed at ranged champions. For them, the max HP damage is being lowered from 6% down to 3%, which is pretty significant. Divine Center is getting an adjustment as well. The Spellblade proc is going to go from 12% max HP to 6% max HP plus an extra 125% of your base AD. Additionally, the heal is going from 6% of the target's max HP for melee and 3% for range, down to 65% of the pre-mitigation damage. Honestly, I'm not really too sure how I feel about this. It's definitely a nerf when dealing with super beefy targets, but it should be power neutral or even a buff when dealing with squishier foes. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at our updated tier list. But before that, I just want to give a shout out to all our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players that spent the years climbing the ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. So, if cramming in the years of top tier gameplay into a short hour long session to instantly get better at the game sounds good to you, you should really go pay them a visit. And they're available 24-7, so feel free to head over at any time. Now, let's get on that tier list. First, we'll be starting off with our top laners. Mordekaiser gets moved down to the S tier. This is a bit surprising, because he was doing super well up until this patch, and hasn't received any direct changes. But it's not too uncommon for a champion to move up and down as popular meta picks shift around. He's still a very solid pick, but not quite as OP as you want a champion to be when you're placing them in the highest tier on this list. Orn gets moved up to the S tier. He's one of the best laners in the game, since you don't even really need a reset to buy items. You can just back off and craft to instantly hit OP early spikes like Bramble Vest and Bammy's early on without even having to miss out on XP. This allows you to build a creeping lead on your foe, and things can really quickly get out of control for them. Nico gets moved up to the S tier, specifically AD Nico. AP Nico works too and has good wave clear and team fighting later on, but when you go AD, she's a monster of a lane bully. She's got tons of harass, and between her W and E, your foe will never even have a great window to try to force an all-in against you. The AD build makes it so you remain a capable duelist throughout the entire game, able to keep other strong side laners like Fiora and Camille in check, even when the game starts to reach the later stages. Tom Kench gets tentatively demoted to the A tier. This may be a bit of an overestimate of how hard the nerf he got on 12.12b is affecting him. If his win rate stays high, we'll probably bump him up to the S tier on our mid-patch update, so make sure you check back and see how he's going in a week. Clyde is doing an absolutely awful poster ability patch, but he's recently bounced back and hit a very middle of the pack spot. Now Riot is giving him some extra love, so we're going to probably consider him an A tier pick. He's overall pickable, and will get decent results in most matchups while being a super hard counter in specific ones. After the big buff Heimdinger got on patch 12.12, his win rate has gone up quite a bit across the board in all roles. As a top laner, we'll be placing him in the A tier, with him being one of the stronger champions at this level. After months and months of being between the C and D tiers, we're tentatively moving Rennington up to the B tier. I'm a bit skeptical, because Riot just really likes to keep changes light with Rennington, since he instantly becomes a staple pro play pick the second that he's viable. But with him getting this type of buff, maybe there's room for him to at least be a counter pick in certain situations. Cho'Gath gets demoted to the B tier. The current meta is still very heavily dominated by hyper carries and enchanters, so the best things are those that can actually disrupt the enemy backline. Cho doesn't really have that type of backline threat. He's just a super beefy boy that likes to try to front to back fights. But those aforementioned hyper carries are able to kite and shred through him, basically leaving him useless. Teemo also gets moved down to the B tier. He's just someone that we consider way too situational to not belong there. In the right matchup, he can be an absolute terror to deal with, but when you aren't specifically counterpicking someone, usually he just ends up being completely useless. 
Singe also gets demoted to the B tier. Those nerfs that he got last patch actually hit him a lot harder than we thought they would, and he's just gonna get beat down from other champions up here. With Volibear jungle being so insanely OP for so long, it's no surprise that Riot is finally nerfing him, but the nerfs just aren't targeted as ability to clear camps. Some of the nerfs are just blanket hits to his kit, so Volibear top, which is already average at best, is moving down to the C tier. There are quite a few instances where you really want to pick him, and even in the games where he is a good pick, there are probably at least a couple of better options. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Belle Veth gets emoted to the S tier. She's still super strong and probably still has the highest carrying potential of any champion in the game, but the nerfs that she got did make her a little bit less consistently able to do that. In other words, her potential to 1v9 is still the same, but she's just a bit of a higher risk now than she was before her 12.12b nerfs. Wukong is tentatively being knocked down to the S tier. This one is pretty tough to measure without actually seeing how badly it affects him. Wukong's clear speed isn't the only thing that makes him a broken champion. There's also his godlike dueling and team fighting, and the only thing that they're doing about that is making his ultimate 10 seconds longer. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we moved him back up to the OP tier in our mid-patch update. Another tentative move that we have is taking Volibear down to the S tier as well. The nerfs he's getting are decent and will definitely affect his clear speed, but like Wukong, his jungle clear isn't necessarily what makes Volibear so broken. There's a the fact that he actually has next to no counterplay in his ganks, especially post 6, and that he does absolutely insane amounts of damage while building full tank. With buffs to Sphere and his ultimate, Fiddle should be a much more impactful force in a team fight when you perfectly land a Crow Sword. For now, we're moving him up to the S tier, but I think there's a chance that he could even end up being an OP tier champion. Shaco's 12.12b buffs bring him up to the A tier. With the Snowbally assassin -y design, Shaco is a champion that should feel at least feast or famine. If you don't get fed fast, you don't deserve to win with him. But lately, even with such a big lead, he doesn't really seem very impactful. Hence, we've seen so many weird bruisery bordering on full tank builds. Assassin Shaco just hasn't been assassinated. Now you should actually be able to push early leads into one-shotting high priority targets in the mid to late game stages. The buff to AP Shaco should help him a little bit too, with a longer cooldown and longer duration on W leading to more ping-ponging of your foes between your boxes. Master Yi moves up to the B tier. He's definitely not suddenly the best pick in the game because of these buffs, but he should at least be viable. They're actually going to give him some decent skill expression, so even when played well, he could be considered a strong A tier or even an S tier pick. Gragas also gets moved up to the B tier. He's a champion that definitely does a lot better in higher levels of play, so if you're golden under, you should probably still consider him C tier and just avoid him in general, mainly because, you know, you have to really rely on your team to follow up. But in plan higher, he's at least good in certain situations, whether it's to synergize with your team or counter the enemies. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. With the buffs that she's getting this patch, we're moving Vex up to the S tier. The buff may seem small, but Vex's Q is her bread and butter. So, taking off a second of its cooldown and upping the AP ratio by 10% can have a pretty big impact on both her laning and team fighting. Cassiopeia gets emoted down to the A tier. She's good, but with so many champions in our OP and S tier for this role, competition is fierce, and a champion needs to be really strong and consistent to hold the spot in those tiers. While the buffs that she's getting may seem mostly aimed at Talia jungle, they will slightly help her out in the mid lane, enough so that we're moving her up to the A tier. Syndra hasn't been doing quite as bad as other champions in the D tier, so we're moving her up to the C tier. You really shouldn't still play her since she's still generally outclassed by all the other champions in the higher tiers, but I guess it could be worse. For example, you could pick Corky. His win rate is already in the red, but Riot is making things even worse by nerfing the only build that really makes him viable. At this point, they maybe should be serving him up with a mid-scope update. It's pretty clear that they can't balance Corky in his current form. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Big R gets emoted to the S tier. He's still a viable scaling pick, but he just doesn't have the kit to compete with Seraphine, Twitch, or Swain when it comes to having a massive impact in those mid to late game 5v5s. Karthus gets promoted to the S tier. In an effort to make Karthus jungle good again, Riot is giving him some random buffs here and there, and the one this patch is aimed at his durability. I don't think Karthus' weakness in the jungle has anything to do with that, but as a bot laner, it'll certainly help him when dealing with the traditional marksman in trades. Grand was really on fire for a while as a super strong bot lane pick, but his flames has simmered down, so we're demoting him to the A tier. He's a decent lane bully, but if that's all you're after, you may as well pick Heimerdinger. He bullies just as hard, but has a much better time scaling into the later parts of the game. To finish things off, we have our supports. Tarek moves up to the OP tier. He's been doing just way too well recently to not put him up here. He pairs so well with both aggressive and more defensive carries, and his scaling is insane. 
He does have a bit of a learning curve, but once you master everything there is to him, you'll be carrying fights hard at all stages of the game. Shaco gets moved up to the A tier. Previously, we would consider Shaco super situational, where you'd only ever pick him if the enemy team was super engaged heavy. But with the slightly lower cooldown on his boxes and the duration going up, he will be a pretty solid pick even when the enemy team isn't all about diving into fights. Alisar gets emoted down to the C tier. There just really isn't anything that he has to offer. Compared to the other engaged champions, it's just way too easy to interrupt his go in button and once that's on cooldown, he doesn't really do anything. The only other thing that he does well is roaming, but in that case, why not just pick up Bard or even Janna? Both of them get results just as easy if not easier and are way, way more useful in fights later on. Alrighty, that concludes our patch 12.13 rundown. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck on your games. And you guys know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.